Welcome back to season three of the Elite Show, The Mob, the Mafia, and the Man. Today's a little bit different. Today we're going to be taking some calls from our listeners, and we're going to be able to speak to them live on via Zoom. Of course, we got the man right here, John Elite. We're joined by Mike Dowd and Mike Felice. Uh, we're looking forward to speaking to the people that are so loyal to us, our soldiers, our what, what, what do you say that? As a family, a shaper. Yeah, that's it. So, shaper. Shaper. What's that? Shaper. Cheap. Okay. He knows what cheap is. <laughs> so stay tuned. Yeah, we got some special ones coming up. These are the Albanian sheepers, right? We're on with Anne Marie from Nanuet, New York. How you doing, Anne Marie? I'm great. You got a question for John? I understand. Yes, I do. So, John, I have a question. In how was it adjusting to you leaving the life of crime? Did, do you ever miss it? And what was the biggest challenge to you that you had to go through? Uh, well, you, I think you're always going to miss part of your life when it changes, for the good or the bad. But you try to, um, you know, you got that adrenaline rush when you're involved in the street. So as you change your life, you find different ways to, to, to get yourself into excitement and adrenaline in a positive way. And I think mm -hmm. by doing some of the stuff we do, working with kids and people and somebody like yourself, it helps us feel good too. So I think there's the adrenaline that you're looking for. You know, but some of the things that the most difficult things is when people try to go on a personal attack uh, against you when you're public. And, you know, sometimes well, you ignore it and other times you laugh it off. And then once in a while you bite back. And I think that's something I try not to do anymore. Well, that's, that's, that's why nonsense. you've been biting a lot of people in the last couple of weeks. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you guys something? My husband, Peter, just went to the gym and he would be in awe right now <laughs> if he saw you on my phone. Screen, oh, my God. He didn't take believe it. Take a screenshot. It. <laughs> oh, my God. He didn't believe it. You know, he was like, oh, no, I'm no, retired. No. So if you want to wait for him to come back, we could talk. And now, no, no, he, it's good. It's good. Emory, that he goes, you know, I've getting been happily to, getting married. to your question. I think I just watched something with John with, I think it was Value Entertainment. And you said something that, I, I think it was Value Entertainment, where you said, if anybody says they don't miss the life, they're full of shit. Because there were some, exactly. probably some good things that happened. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's true, right? You do yeah, miss it. I, I, I think anybody that's involved anywhere in a long period of time are going to miss a, a lot of aspects of that life. You know, there's right. a lot of good ones. And obviously, I think the majority of bad ones. But. Yeah, well, the consequences never end, Anne-Marie, and, and I'm sure you know that from any missteps you make. You're constantly paying for them, and John seems to not be paying for them anymore, so we're going to have to uh, make him pay. <laughs> <laughs> John, you know, is there any, like, backlash from you getting out, or are you just, you know, do you still associate with anybody from there? No, nah, I don't associate. Anybody that's changed your life, yeah. Uh, people that are in the life that ask for kind of advice, about certain questions on the QT, I, you know, I do, but uh, other than that, no. My next question, because I prepared, um, when did you know, John, that your life was finally transformed and that you were never going back to it? When you stepped over that line and you knew that you were doing the right thing and that you were never going to go back to that life? Uh, I think when I was in, prison and yeah. uh a guy one of the guys that was a guard he reminded me of uh, uh he was a marine hero and uh, a couple inmates tried to attack him and i jumped in to help him so i think that was you know because that's something you really won't do in prison um and i uh, where was this where was this john i didn't i didn't know you were so good when did you do this yeah hillsborough wise guy hillsborough <laughs> florida <laughs> Oh, you were in, uh, you also in that jail? I was in a lot of jails, unfortunately. <laughs> Changed his address quite a bit. So the, so the, the guard ended up writing me a nice letter. Uh, right. That I right. try to come Well, I, I just want you to know that, you know, and I, I say it to you, I really am. It really is a pleasure and I'm an honor speaking to you today. And I know we always talk through Instagram and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I wish I would have looked better <laughs> I didn't realize it would be on a video. Um, but you really are my true inspiration and strength, 
John, and oh, I now that I'm at, I was a property manager for many years, so right. I've seen it all. And my anxiety level level has dropped. I started my new job. I'm not really under all that pressure like I used to be. But like when I got to get on the parkway and I got to drive, I'm like, well, I know I can do it because John, <laughs> John Elite can definitely do it. There you go. So, you know, you really, great. you're, no, I'm being serious. You yeah. really, you know, I'm a nervous, of course, but right. you really are a true inspiration. And, you know, on that podcast, when I was mentioned, when Kevin mentioned me, I didn't really know I was going to be mentioned. But my question is, did you really know, do you really know who I am? Do you remember <laughs> helping me? Oh boy, that's a loaded question. Yeah, it's a loaded. No, do you really remember? Because I was like at my dark. What happened was I wrote you this whole thing on Instagram, right? Right. And then I went to sleep, and I got up the next morning, and I tried to retract the the message, but you had already seen it. So then, when I wrote to you, and I was, oh, it was terrible. It was back in February, and you wrote, "You got to stay positive." Hi, you got to stay positive. And I'm like, oh my god, he read the whole thing i mean i will give you my number i'm like please call me blah 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 i mean i was just really really upset and then we went back and forth and i mean i remember I, you said you got to go to the storage you got to stay out you got to do this blah 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 and i'm like you know what i can i can and then like i got a job the next day and i'm like oh my god like you know this is awesome yeah. so listen er, er, my next question is because i'll go on and on and i'm sorry i talk a lot um do you ever get tired of answering so many questions about the mob? I know, like myself, people are very intrigued about the lifestyle. I don't think you get tired of it. You, you, uh, you understand people are intrigued and you try to answer as much as you can, but you want to go past that because we're in different directions. What we do here, you know, we do a lot right. of stuff with right. uh, ball plays and therapists and lawyers right. and Right. Probably. So, because a lot of the podcasts are at, that are out there, I mean, first of all, you know, they bash you. Okay. I mean, it's ridiculous the things that they say. Uh, that, I'm means, like, that, means no way. that means he matters, Henry. I could Yeah, exactly. Off. When yeah. you're doing, exactly. When you're doing a good job, people don't like you. I, right. I totally you understand that. It's, it's so true. But the things that they make up and the things that they say, I'm like, you know, it's just, it's like they're so jealous of you because of what you've accomplished and what you've walked away from and that you're doing good things now that it bothers them deep down inside because they can't get over that part all they talk about is the same stuff like i stopped watching it because i'm like enough I, you know not to bring it up enough with john Gotti, enough with this one enough with that one it's like enough it's like it was like 1985 was a great time. 1990 was a great time. But, you know, you get to an age, it's like enough. You got to kind of put that behind you. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you're all of you, you're all awesome. You know, it's Thank just, you. um, I know, I, just can't believe, no. I know, I know, Kevin, I know, Kevin, I know, Kevin tells you know. himself that every day. <laughs> it's my part of my self affirmation, positive affirmations, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> Amory, Amory, that's all we got time for today. Thank you okay, so but, much. I know you're one of our just, biggest supporters. Oh, thank you. And John, thank you so much. John, thank you so much. And you too, Mike. You're awesome. All of you are awesome. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. And it was awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank Take you. Take care of yourself. Okay, you too. Bye bye. All right. Mike too. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, hit the subscribe button. We got something special today. We're going to joke around back with the jokes that write us comments on our show. And we're only going to take the negative comments. The people that uh, faithfully watch us and comment against us. So we'll give them their, their two minute of fame today. We got to make some fun and have a little laughs with you guys. So join us, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and uh, here we go. Let's read the first one at, let's see, Tony Fat Tony Salerno. I've seen this guy post a lot on, on our show. Now, Fat, this is, uh, I think this is Kriya's kid. Or uh, McGilla Gorilla, one or the other. They they comment on the, under this name on a regular basis, so we're gonna give them the tribute to McGilla Gorilla and Kriya Stevie Wonder Boy Kriya's spoiled little kid. So this is their comment. He says Angel Gotti is trying to live off the father. A Light has been living off the Gottis for years now. Buffoon with a smiley face. 
So I have to laugh because anybody that understands, if McGilla Gorilla knew anything about the mob, uh, she would have been dragged in like everybody else for questioning by the uh, the police. Never happened. Uh, she's the only one in the family that was never popular for anything. So, you know, you had the sister that was on shows. You had their kids that were on shows. You had people in the family. The father, obviously, it was all over every newspaper. So this is her chance, and she's crawling, begging, and scratching away for claim to fame. So her claim to fame is always going to be McGilla Gorilla for sale. <laughs> That's going to be comment number one. Let's go to the next. Lyndon, where are you from? From Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. You want to be on camera? Yeah, definitely. Now, we also he is a little late to ask. <laughs> well, no, it's before we start recording. Um, just uh, want to make sure you're okay with being on camera. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Big okay. fan. All right, I'll introduce you, and we'll be ready to go as soon as we get the sign from our engineer. Awesome. Thank you. All right, now we're talking to Lyndon from Brooklyn. Is, is today New York Day? Apparently, everybody's from New York coming in today. So, Lyndon, you got a question for John? Yeah, I do. Hey, how's it going, John? Big fan and fellow Albanian here. Good. It's really exciting to be here with you. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you calling in. It's real exciting being in this room, too, let me tell you. Yeah, you know, the temperature's really getting high here. <laughs> <laughs> I bet of... in that presence, I yeah. bet everything's on the, yeah. all up and high. <laughs> so what do you got for John today? I wanted to ask, uh, within your history coming up, in that type of industry and business, did it ever turn into an obstacle or motivation, your heritage, being Albanian, knowing that you're in in an organization like run by Italians, knowing that sort of rivalry, did it ever weigh on you that much? Or did anybody ever try to make sure you failed knowing that you weren't one of them? No, I, what I think is, what happens is- uh, Hold on. Is he Albanian? Are you I Albanian? Am. I am. Yeah. John, John, you ready? Yeah. I knew. You know, we I all knew. had it. The guys are ready. Right. Yeah, I'm going to do it, Joe, it. I'm, but I'm not Albanian. Right. Give the Irish goodbye. Right. Everybody, got <laughs> Everybody got it. Everybody got to do it. So there's there's been a, a lot of groups of guys, uh, Jewish, like in the old days with Bugsy Siegel, Maya Lansky, Jimmy Burke, Irish. So there's certain guys that were out there that we were able to get to that level. And, you know, when you're out there, I think you try to prove yourself a little more than the next because you're unique compared to most of these guys. And right. you want to be the guy that's going to shine. And over, over time, two things always make you very uh, popular. Brutality. Is, yeah, you got to be uh, brutal on the street, vicious, and uh, moneymaker. And then, yeah, and those things... When those things happen, then you become, you have a network of guys that get very friendly with you. You'll have outside guys reaching out from everywhere from you. That's important to, to last on the street. Oh, okay. I follow you. Did you feel you had to prove yourself? I don't think you, you had to prove yourself being Albanian. They knew that we had a reputation of being violent. You had to have the ability of making money. I mean, everybody wants the same thing. It's money. You, everybody can be violent and stupid, but uh, it's the ability to be able to do really both in my in my eyes. Yeah, but what, why go towards the Italian mob? I know from what I know about the Westies, they were a little bit more accepting of everybody. They worked with every group of people. Well, because I grew up with okay. the Italian mob, like Albanians in, in Europe, you know, is a very close to the Italian heritage. So, right, they do a lot of my business. My father's guys were, you know, the role in the mob, so... Yeah. Uh, secondly, now having transitioned out of that life and being sort of like a public figure, needing to back home almost like a superstar, do you see any similarities in the lifestyle? Or now do you made that full transition to this new future now where you just want to try and guide everything and sort of be this status or a symbol of sort of learning and hope specifically for the newer generation? I, uh, I think that, you know, no matter what you do, your past is with you. It stays with you. So you got to use it for a good thing, not a bad thing. Because before it was known as, uh, I guess, to certain people, it was a good thing. But it's overall, to society, it's a bad thing, the way I'm living. So I think once you, you make that transition, you understand how you can take that stuff and make it a positive thing 
for people in the present and the future. So uh, there's things that we do to stay together and, and try to help the next guy. And we joke around a lot and we do all that stuff. But from, from a perspective of the street, I try to show them there's no win. You're not going to win out there. Guys will never stop with me, you know, to today. The only way you can stop them is you can't kill them all. And you, what do you, and you, one end up is you're going to eventually go to prison yourself or get killed. Gotcha. And lastly, when you came and visited Albania and Kosovo a few times, so there were rumors that you might sort of trans trickle into politics, maybe endorse a few other candidates here and there. Would we ever see a John Aditi in politics or as a future prime minister or president? Yeah. You know, uh, I love politics. Everybody knows. So, you know, we're dabbling uh, over there and here. So who knows? You never know your future. So, you know, if you got a couple of million, we can get them. We'll get them going forward. Right. Anywhere we are right now, including the year. Well, when you when you talk to Trump, did you, did you ask him for any advice? On how to get in? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Open your wallet, you tell Esther. <laughs> uh, everybody knows a guy. And back home, some people, from what I've read and heard, they're very excited to have somebody of his status leading a few areas. Oh yeah. Uh, well, your 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 slogan is, "Did I change my life? Yes, I did." That's right. You know, he knows my slogan, yeah. right? Well, I definitely. My life. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Will he change Albania? Yes, it will. <laughs> Lyndon, thank you so much for calling in. We really appreciate it. Well, like I said, we read all these comments and to, to actually go face to face with somebody is it's a big thrill for us. Thank you. Stay in thank touch. you very much. I, I really all appreciate right, it. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Go ahead, Mike. You got one? Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard for me because uh, I want to cry. Um, you know, they're always making fun of me for over talking, cutting people off. At Rich Long from the Carrazzo Show. Yep. Calm Mike down. I'm a loyal Albanian follower from Detroit. Mike seems like a good guy over over talking all the guests. I I, I don't even know what the fuck that means. He I mean, seems you, like a good guy. Well, I wrote that. That's oh, probably okay. me, Rich Long. <laughs> oh, you're Rich Long. Oh, so it's a dick long, you're Rich Long. Okay, now I got it. Makes sense. Yeah. L listen, you know what? Because a lot of them don't understand the, the humor that's going back and forth. And some of the connection, and we we do it purposely. Well, let me cut you of off. You, and you <laughs> cut me. But what do they want to listen to the fucking news here? Rich, I got the bat for this. Purpose. Is this CNN? Oh, don't bring up that okay. name, or you get so, hit with the bat. So, so my point is, this is not fake news. That my point is that this is a show, and people seem to get, get, be of the opinion that that we're over talking one another. This is what we. You know, the problem is, because I, I, I actually did it to you yesterday. I talked right over top of you. Because a thought pops in your head. You say something that, that sparks something right. in my head. A thought pops in my head, and I just bleh, I just throw it up instead of waiting for my turn. Yeah, but we I'm, take, we take uh, something. He, he doesn't mean that viciously. So no, I, I, I want the, you to pick some of the guys that are vicious. Yeah, well, you know what it is? I haven't had a chance. You know, I'm okay. sitting down here looking through. But, but, and he wasn't vicious. But, the, but I guess my point is, as I went further, uh, someone tells me to shut up. And then someone else says, I love it, more of Mike. Right in the same, right in the same uh, feed. It was you. No, I don't even, I don't even read these comments because I go home and kill myself. I'm killing myself. Go to the next comment. Let's go to the next one. This, this one's not really negative. It just made me laugh. It says, did I start wearing sunglasses indoors after watching this guy? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, you just read that one. <laughs> You know, I'm 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 on a bad episode because I, I have I can't find too many bad comments on this last episode. Evan from Ontario, Canada. Evan, thanks so much for joining us. And you got some questions for John? Yeah, uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, congratulations on all the success, guys. And uh, you know, and thank you for having me on the show. I I want to thank you for this opportunity. I got I I got so many. I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. I got a lot of questions. I'm more um, nervous than you. I'm shitting my pants. Go right ahead. <laughs> Keep it classy, Mike. <laughs> He's that awesome. Classy. He's awesome. We just me and my wife just watched the seven five the other night. So uh, she she was blown away. She was blown away. She's a country girl, so she doesn't know anything about uh, that kind of stuff, right? So. Keep her um, in the country then. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I got so many questions I want to ask you. Uh, uh, I guess uh, like 
I guess one is, um, you know, like in the nineties, you know, I always, I listened to Tupac a lot, like a lot of rap and, and, and Biggie and stuff like that. And there was always mention of them, you know, of the mafia and like John Gotti, you know, uh, and just, just their persona. Like if you look at how Tupac was on death row, it was like this Godfather Scarface kind of persona. And like on the, you know, the East coast, it was this like Frank white King of New York kind of thing you know and they always portrayed and gave off this image i just wanted to know how much involvement did the mafia actually have in the music industry at that time like was it actually legit what they were saying on the records like you know picking up keys and and i know that a lot of them associated had a lot of association between street gangs like crips and bloods so there had to have been some sort of territorial permission i guess from like i guess the five families to be able to profit off narcotics Right. So I was wondering, like, how much involvement did the mafia have in, like, let's say the rap, like the rap world, like those guys. Right. Most of the streets entangled with each other, unlike what people think. By ethnic groups, it doesn't matter whether it's you're talking about street gangs, you're talking about the Westies, you're talking about different groups of individuals. If there's money to be made, whether it's narcotics, whether it's the rap business. Uh, there'll be relationships. Uh, it doesn't mean the top guys are going to be meeting with them, but there's arrangements being made over the years right. in, in both industries. Right. Well, and, now you got to uh, listen to, uh, there's actually a rap song made about John by No Sleep Bugatti. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. By who? No Sleep Bugatti. You got to know. <laughs> Come on, Mike. You got to keep up with the times, man. He's he's up and coming. <laughs> they, they, made, they made a song about Mike by Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's a lot of guys that called me up to make a song about me, Mo. Bo. <laughs> I just don't know what, how to start it off, but if you let me if you let me spit a few lines at you, I'll show you some shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. So you got another question for John? Yeah, I was wondering, uh, so like, and Kevin, you, you, I remember you mentioned in like on a previous episode that you, you know, you grew up around the Scarfo like family, I guess, like, uh, like Nikki Scarfo, like you lived down the street or something. I, I remember you mentioning, and John, I remember you mentioned you were kind of familiar with them. I was wondering if, if Salvi Testa hadn't have died and like, would he, do you think like if he would have made an alliance with Harry Riccobini, they would have been able to like overcome you know, Scarfo, like I know, I know Nikki had like some people under him, like some good hitters, like the Crow, Nikki Caramundi and, and, you know, Pat the Cat, right. Guys like these, but they ended up getting whacked out. I was just wondering, like if, if Harry would have went the way of still, you know, aligning with the Angelo Bruno faction, right. And being able to kind of get Salvi Testa and, and, and Philip Testa over onto his side, do you think that they would have been able to Kind of overpowered Nikki, or was he was he way too powerful? Harry, Harry the Hunchback. He, Harry the Hunchback was was brutal. Yeah, Harry the Hunchback was. And he had uh, he was a little bit of a cat, actually, Harry. So he got away with a lot for a long time. Uh, and I, I mean, it's very hard to say if he would have gotten in a bigger power position and made alliances. It always changes things. But at right. that time, uh, Nikki was pretty well dug in there. So. Well, Sa Salvi was ultra loyal, okay? And right. and Philly and Eddie always said that when when the order was given for Sally to be killed, uh, it hurt him really bad because Sal Salvi wasn't looking for that. He, he Listen, he was a good-looking guy. He had a lot of media attention on him. Somebody They did an article on him, and I, that's kind of why he got killed because Nikki got jealous. But um, I don't think so because Sally was a loyal – he was – he was like a, a Sonny Francais. He was Cosa Nostra till the end. That was his gig. So to it, my perspective, no. I don't think he would have gone outside that, that Sonny family. Senior, not Sonny Junior. <laughs> yeah, Sonny Senior. What did I say? Did I say Junior? Sonny. I said Sonny. Yeah, okay. but yeah, but people don't. Yeah. There's people out there that don't know there's a Senior and a Junior. That's why I'm just putting that in there. But, John, your take on it, I mean, you, you were inside. I'm looking at I was a kid, all right? So I, I was a kid. Knowing what I know about Sal, I don't think that would have happened. You do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with you. All right. What I thought. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, I was, I always wonder that because that always that 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 kind of war always interested me, you know. And it was it was pretty prominent, like when I was you know 
a little bit younger, like I'm 36 now. Right. And I remember my dad always talking about that. And my dad would always tell me about, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'd talk about it like constantly. Right. So maple uh, leaves. Well, you like the maple leaves. Oh yeah. I'm a big leaves man. Okay. Big leaves man. I know. I know. Amazing don't, I Canada don't get started. Don't get started. I hear yeah, it yeah. all the, the time. The only hockey team <laughs> in the world see. that calls in the love guru to take care of their players. I oh, I'm see. sorry. That was a movie. <laughs> no, I see yeah. you got a Toronto, you said a Toronto in the uh, Blue Jays behind you or something? Yeah, yeah. So I got a, I got a whole bunch of hockey oh, memorabilia. See, and... see, I got, yeah, it's yeah, there's, there's tons of it, and I got. This is my, uh, my other side. Yeah. So the only place in the world that has a tower above home plate for uh, Blue Jays Stadium, the CN Tower, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, the, uh, it's actually, I'm pretty sure it's, it was one of the only ones that had like a real field, like a uh, actual grass or something. That's hmm. why like we play down in, in, in Florida and Dun, Dun, uh, Dunedin, Dunedin, I think. Dunedin. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so we yeah. got time for one more question. What do you got? Uh, really? I, um, that's, those were it. I, I, you know, I, I just want to, yeah, it was just really actually awesome to actually talk to you guys finally, right? You know, I've sent you guys messages and stuff, and it's it's really nice, too, that, you know, you guys message back. You guys are really wholesome people, you know, and, and you know, my wife's happy that I found something, like, even, you know, watching your show, Kevin, and watching John's show, it really does help me. Like, I, I you know, I suffer from some mental illnesses and things, and it really does help me, and it's nice to know that there's people out there Oh, that have the same emotional It just clicked in my head who I you do. are. Yeah. I just clicked in my head who you are. And I've seen pictures of you. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, that's... Naked? Have you seen naked pictures? <laughs> Those are ones I keep in a private folder. Because I get a lot of them, too. Man, I'm jealous hey. of some of these guys. Now, Evan's, Evan's actually been a, a supporter of both of our shows, both cool. both the Mob, the Mafia, and the Man, and the Suffering Podcast. So, Evan, thank you so thank much. You, Evan. Hey, Evan, hey, thanks a lot, brother. Evan, I got one question for you, though. You got yeah. all these pictures on your walls. Where's the picture of John? I don't have a picture of John Go on, on here. Johnelite.com. They're on, they're on there. <laughs> I will I will be getting one. So I will be getting one. Right. I'm actually I just finished uh, reading Gaudy's Rules, and uh, uh, yeah, it's like that book just blew me away. Like I I just I don't like yeah. I don't know how you did it, man. Yeah. To be honest, like I I couldn't have been able to do any of that. And for any of these people that like you know question it it's ridiculous like our like the Ari Franco the first paragraph of the damn book like gave me chills man like it just I was like I I like I yeah we love you it. know I wouldn't have known what to do it. we love it <laughs> so man he you saved know. a lot of lives by killing well, we, finally, we finally fixed his he neck saved so a lot it's okay. of lives by killing those assholes don't you worry <laughs> 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 Evan, thank it. you so much for coming in I appreciate it Thank you, guys. Well, for the people that are negative, we got to give them the, they want they want a little attention. Well, so you, for anybody that's writing us, if you write under your real name, we will definitely put you on. But you all write under fake names. And then and th here's the problem. Only cowards do this and only the haters do it. But yet the haters seem to be watching every one of our show. Yeah. This is at Gary Gleed, G-L-E-E-D. I don't know if he's real. If anybody knows him, let me know if he's real. He doesn't seem to be real. He says, still 10 years after talking about J John Jr. First off, anybody that understands what happened here, John Jr. and his family have never stopped doing shows about me. Week after week, I don't do talks about them. They have nothing going on in their lives. He's uh, not popular. He's uh, a dweeby guy. There's nothing to even talk about uh, with the guy. If he was good looking, if he had a good voice, if he dressed well, if he had a social life, if... Uh, Somebody thinks so. When someone says something like this, I know you're a fanboy or a fake account. What's a fanboy? So, fanboy is uh, just somebody that is impressed with that last name. So you oh, know, with the Gotti name or the Alight name? With the Gotti okay. name. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, I stay with normal human beings that uh, act like gentlemen and and women and and people that'll go under their real normal name. human beings. Didn't you just do a show with a with a transgender? She's normal. Oh, okay. uh, Ashley. She's actually pretty. She nice. actually was very nice. And anybody that watched our last show, Scott, the little man. I challenge you to basketball. Oh, Me Scott. and you are going to play that game. We're getting it on. <laughs> and for people don't understand who he is, you got to check him out. He's four foot one, very funny guy, good guy. And uh, me and him are going to have to play in a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. And I'm going to dunk on him. I'll make LeBron James look bad. Here's so. here's one for you, John. 
It comes from Art Val 1986, and it says, rats calling out other rats. I got to respond to that. Yeah. This is a grown man, I think, if he's a real account. Again, I invite him on a show. We invite him on a Zoom. We invite him. When he could talk like a child and behave like a child, and only a coward writes like this, and they don't see that the fathers that raised them raised complete, you know, I, I hate to use this word, but complete fucking pussies. Because anybody that writes like a jerk off like that is a jerk off. And if he's too stupid to see that he's a jerk off the way he writes, then, you know, I want to give a tribute to him. So I hope the moron puts his face up so we can really show people what kind of he is. And if he has kids, he should be ashamed of himself. I don't that I don't think you answered the question, to be honest with you just answer now. It. No, you said he's calling you a rat. Exactly. How do you answer that? I don't care what he's he's a nobody jerk off. No, the, the, the problem what? is I I have to, I answer that question for answer, people for answer, you all the time. Answer, that's answer. why I'm and that's yeah. why I'm, you, you're not the only one who has to get confronted with this bullshit because so, I have to tell people that you're not a rat if the people that you're loyal to aren't loyal to you. That's the answer to that question because if I'm if 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 I'm loyal to you and you give me up, I owe you nothing. So I'm not a rat. Now I'm fucking doing what I got to do for me right. because you already threw me under the bus. There's no loyalty in the world of any world of any human human existence i mean an animal takes down another animal it's it's game on that other the, well, all the other animals got well, a, a free to feast we already went through this 10,000 times well, my point is when you're going to when a guy call, calls you a rat for telling on other rats you, you know, he has to be called out you know this what is, is a guy who's who, who can't control his own household that he wouldn't be writing like this a grown <laughs> man won't so i guarantee he doesn't have a wife or his wife's out there running around he wouldn't be doing that <laughs> And he ain't mad maybe, enough to maybe, step in here. Maybe you tapped. Yeah. You know why you're getting so offended about it? By it? Because John's your friend. You're loyal to John. Yeah, but right? yeah, but people don't listen. No, they, they don't, don't have the attention span. You're they right. don't want to listen. You're right. I mean, the guy I, was an informant. Not just him, but his whole who? crew. Gotti. Well, I didn't hear you say that. Well, he doesn't he, say that. But, but he doesn't have to say that. The whole I didn't hear world you knows say that. that. Well, who do you think he's I, defending? Of course, he's probably Gotti writing it. You know, the, the guy's just a fucking clown. This guy, listen, for that guy that said that, let me make this very clear. His father got his ass kicked in jail. He was an older man. He was sick. And the son did nothing about it. So that means he ain't a tough guy or a gangster. When Sammy Gravano gave his father life and he died in prison. Choking on his own. Choking on his own spit. He died a horrible death. He was in solitary confinements. His son did nothing about it. He ain't a gangster. Forget me, to step me out of the picture. The, the, the problem is he's a fraud, like most of them. Okay. He's a fraud to allow your father, forget about being a gangster, you're, as a son, to allow your father to suffer that way at the end of his life and do nothing about it, you're a fucking coward. Michael, I got one for you. So you go ahead. Because yeah. I've been looking and I don't read that quick. I got dyslexia. Well, I, <laughs> quickly I read. Uh, it says... This Michael Dowd ruined your podcast, brother. He's annoying and loud and constantly interrupting to tell corny jokes. I literally stopped watching. I'll handle this. You're fired. (laughs) (laughs) So let me. Uh, Thank you. I can go home now. (laughs) Let me explain something. Mike has a way of of speaking. It's just natural way of speaking. Off camera, you're the same way. Yeah. Okay. You're the same way. But it doesn't mean you don't have any valid points. Like I take offense to this one. We had we recently had guests in here that I thought were a little harsh. All right, with the way they treated you. Right. All right. And I we had private conversations right. about this. I took offense to it the same way that you just took offense to somebody calling John a rat. Right. Um, people don't realize what you bring to the show. Your personality alone, your insight, your past experience. They don't see any of that stuff. All they see is Michael Dow. And you're on cocaine. They want to hate. They want to hate. They but wanna, guess what? Yeah. The haters are watching you more I than love the ones it. I love you. I love it. That's Yeah. And, and to, to, the, to the point, uh, if this person's no longer listening to the show, why is he writing? It's sure okay, just for everybody. That's that's the name of the person. Right. Sure okay. Yeah, but he's no, no longer listening. Oh, I'm sure he's listening Well, he right just now. said he's not. Oh, yeah. I guess not. But he, It's ruined. Yeah. yeah. See if he still see if he still subscribe. subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for one that they 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 called me. Um, I, I don't get the, the the same comments. Thankfully, I don't get. The yeah, same you comments. don't get the same. I, I heard somebody called me a clown, and I'm I read it, and I, I'm looking for it. And I'm I'm kind of like I just sort of chuckle a little bit, and I go clown. Well, well it's kind of unoriginal. Well, you can't get mad at these these guys. Whoever Shh. does this, what seriously? Any successful person or housewife or person who watching our show. 
you know, they always write something nice or they don't write. Right. Only only people that are miserable with their lives and want attention are jealous. I found another super I writer. found another one, but it's not as harsh. But it's, it's Volva, at Volva, Chomon, Chomon, Chomone, uh, and it's on the uh, the show we did in Florida with the MMA wrestler guy, um, Matt. Mike, don't get me wrong. Love your energy, your story, your stories, but do us a a favor. Drink decaf before the show. <laughs> I ordered wine glasses and electronic corkscrew. Now all I need is the name of the wine. So tell uh, them, tell me like a little Pouli Fousse, Montaché. No, no, the and, name of the and, and tell them to send over no, the bottle. No, no, the, the the guy's commenting on the wine show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. With, uh, with, with, what's his name? Massimo. Yeah, well, Massimo. Yeah. Massimo's coming, actually. He's going to meet us in Florida next week. He's flying in from Italy. Oh, that's nice. Hey, Massimo, we'll see him. Yeah. Don't forget to bring so the wine. That was a nice comment, Don't but it, it was like an wine. offhanded, like, Mike, you're, I love the energy. I got but... I, I to do another Gotti boy. Let's see, fanboy. Let's see. This one's at Joe Pagano. All you got is talking about the Gottis. You're so mad you ratted and he didn't. So, Pagano. First, Joe. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and The Elite Show. You know, over a lifetime, I think anybody and everybody feels overwhelmed and burnt out. Somebody like myself that went through therapy over the years, it was a convenience to be able to call BetterHelp, connect with somebody right over the phone and not leaving my house, and build confidence through a therapist online. And, you know, by doing that, it's really helped me over the years to uh, feel better, to understand when I'm burnt out, understand when I need to talk to somebody. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash elite. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T. E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash elite. Better help. The way you write, you need a little education. I guess you're not, you never went to school, but okay. So for you again, Gotti Sr. in his own voice calls uh, his own daughter, McGilla Gorilla. Uh, he calls Angel uh, a rat, worse than Sammy Gavano for ratting. So let, let, let me use Gotti Sr.'s own voice. He also dismantles his family because they never visit, never send them cards, never wrote them, made him suffer. And again, for you, Gotti Jr. did nothing to help his father when he got beat up in jail. He did nothing to Sammy Govano. So it shows you he ain't a gangster. Just forget anything else. Take everything out of the picture. And as far as writing, I guess you don't watch or don't read. He was meeting with the FBI. He said he only ratted a little bit. We gave dozens of names he ratted on. He got kicked out of the mob. He was shelved. He was stabbed up in Long Island because he was a rat. And the man's on the run from the rat. He says he's a crime fighter. So now, when you say to meet the FBI, there's documents out there. The Daily News put it up on front page. The New York Post put it on the front page. Jerry Capici wrote several articles. He was an informant and a rat. And if you want to go back and listen to the details of the last case. And again, we invite John Gotti Jr. anytime to protect himself and say, uh, he was only ratting a little bit. He only got her pregnant a little bit. So get your facts straight if you're going to watch. And and look at all the letters he sent in. He just got, him and his family just had Gene Borello locked up and violated. Again, he ratted. So this is his MO. Uh, the guy is a cooperator, can't change it. Uh, he's a lost human being. So you guys that are fanboys that are, or the Gotties themselves under fake names, you're on every one of our pages, so that means you watch every one of our show. Thank you. Tell us where we got to send a check for uh, when we get paid from YouTube. We'll send you over an end. Would you ever sit in a room with him? I already offered him a hundred times to get in a room. He can't. He's lied so often. He's embarrassed. He, he, this, you can't take away a timeline. I'm sitting in jail. He's ratting. He's meeting the FBI. Well, I'm sitting in a penitentiary in Brazil. End of story. Well, it's just interesting. But that's that not the only story. The story is his own father says it. His own father called half the family rats. And his own father suffered. And we cannot let this go. He did nothing to help his father. You're supposed to be. Forget about asking somebody to do it. You should have did it. That was your father. Why didn't any of the men in the Gotti family take care of business for his father while he was getting beat up or while he was suffering in jail for the rest of his life? 
Why did they not? You got brothers. Yeah. Anybody ever hurt your father? No. You guys got family. No. You got kids. Anybody hurt your family? No. Listen, anybody hurt anybody in my family? I bat I batted them in the past. They all testified on Gotti's behalf at trial. Right. I batted them. I shot them. I stabbed them. So everybody knows what I'll do if you do something with my family. Right. He did nothing to help his father. The only thing he does is blame his father for his life. And any of these weasels that write under fake names or them, I dare them to put their face up. We'll do Didn't a Zoom his father call with put them. him in the military academy at LaSalle Military Academy? One of the yes, and and to, to keep him out of the life, it kept him out of the life, to keep him out of the life. His father kept him out of the life as long as he could, and then eventually he said, "I gotta pull him next to me before somebody kills him out there." Is because, that why he brought? Him that's in? why I brought him in. I just think it's interesting that you're willing to do it. And if if he really wanted to clear the air, hey, who who did this? Who did what? Who did what? Sit down and talk about it. What are you afraid of? That's he can't. He's blamed everybody yeah, in his life but I himself. I've seen him. I've seen him. See what he does now with McGilla Gorilla. He puts her out front. And McGilla Gorilla partners up with Stevie Crea. Are you referring Stevie to Stevie Crea's. Yeah. McGilla Gorilla, you got to call Mr. Peebles. He'll tell you who she is. But you got <laughs> McGilla Gorilla, right, is partnered up with Stevie Crea's son. So you got one rat. And you have a boss that's doing, uh, maybe, I don't know what he's doing, life or something, who's allowing his son to, talk. to run around with a boss's, with a, with the, God, he's a boss, God. he's allowing a, him to run around, his son to run around with McGill Gorilla, when McGill Gorilla's brother's a rat. So that's okay as long as the agenda fits their needs. Yeah, So and, and that brings us back to the original statement I made. There's no loyalty. If they're loyal to anybody or themselves, that's between them. But if someone's not loyal... You owe, you owe them nothing. You left the country. Right. I you left the country. In Brazil while he's a rat. You oh, which, the by the country. way, was an easy stretch for you. Yeah. 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 You left the country in order not to rat and not to get killed. Two things. Yeah. Because you could have you could have called the FBI up from from uh, Howard Beach or whatever the heck you were hanging out in South Jersey on in a mountain. You had a mountain estate. What do you had? You had a ten I million dollars estate. You yeah. had a ten million dollar estate in in, yeah. in South Jersey. Yeah. You could have sent Cherry Hill somewhere. Yeah. You could have called the feds and said, "You know what? I'm good. I, 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 cash me in. Keep my state and, and and put this guy away for life." Correct. Correct. You could have done this. Hundred percent. I mean, have you ever said that? Yeah, they know. Okay. I mean, these are no, no, no. Have you ever said that on a show? I've said it before on shows. So, so you could have done that. You chose to leave the country. Everything you know, your family, everything, your wife, your girlfriend. But you're whatever, talking about guys that aren't killers. The, the, my prime example of showing they're not killers or gangsters or tough guys are their fathers went to jail and they do nothing about So you about could have joined it. Sammy in the witness protection program. Of course. And you didn't. Instead, John Gotti Jr. joined them. <laughs> yeah, 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 there, here's the problem. He didn't want to hurt nobody. He didn't want to kill anybody. He didn't give a fuck about his father as long as he could take his money. Right. And then he blames his father. Who, who can't see this? Do you have a lot of money? I mean, these guys, do they have a lot of money? The father left them a ton of money. All the drug money, plus he had drug money. You know, so whatever he had. I thought they didn't do drugs. The whole family did drugs, used drugs, and sold drugs. So, you know, when they're throwing stones at they other have people, good the whole did family. they have good coke? Yeah, they got the best from me. They got good coke. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. <laughs> I, do, I do have one that's just not about any of us. Well, it is about us a little bit. So it was on the Lee Whitley episode. And for those of you who forgot, Lee Whitley is in, is a Canadian who's working in the cannabis industry for the cure. He cancer. was in jail with me. Yes, when we got and Jimmy me. Gotti and his friend. Oh, you, and, you, you, were, you know the story. Yeah, he was there when we heard a couple of guys. Yeah. This is a very sarcastic comment from Boondock Journeyman, and it says, "These are definitely the guys I'd get medical advice from." I read this comment, and I was listening. I was sitting right here when Lee was talking. This is a guy who has obviously never had anybody close to them die of cancer. Because if that if you ever did have somebody close to you die of cancer, you will do anything. Yeah, grasp on anything. You will do anything to get them help. And I just, it, this, this is ridiculous. I, I just think that's the most ridiculous comment of any. Of course, they're going to bash bash you guys. Lee, uses, not his, yeah. Lee uses his own money, yeah. tries to help people. Right. He doesn't charge anybody. He has no agenda. He's a gentleman. Everybody heard the way he talk. He's no dummy. He's got scientists and doctors that work for him. He's well known for, for trying to help people with cancer patients. So when an idiot, maybe he's not a bad guy that made this comment. Maybe he just wasn't thinking and he wrote something stupid. Right. And hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Because I just think it's an irresponsible thing. I know if, if somebody, a member of my family was doing it, I, I don't care. Uh, whatever I'll, I can find. Right, uh, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's all whatever good. Whatever it is. Here's, here's another one. Let's do I'm, I'm on a roll with the Gotti stuff. So they're, they're writing on this... Guinea 
Guinea Mick 74 writes, <laughs> uh, Junior Gotti never put anyone in jail. It's, it's laughable. Yeah, again, these guys are Gotti guys. They so just you should say accounts. you never put anybody in jail either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, put, he put everybody in jail. He opened up investigations. He put Mike Yanati lost his case, and he did the 20-something years because of Junior Rat. And uh, Joey D'Angelo went to jail because of Gotti Rat, and he couldn't get a plea, and then Gotti took a plea. He put all my friends on a murder investigation. He get bag men up. He gave political people up. He gave Daly the detective up from the 106. So whoever wrote that's so stupid. Danny Marino couldn't get a bail, so you had to stay in jail for a murder. He ended up copping out the murder because Gotti gave him up. And don't take my word for it. Take Gotti's own word that he said he only ratted on a YouTube he did himself on my enemies. He said, I only ratted on my enemies. That has to be the dumbest comment ever made in the world by anybody. And I only ratted a little because I had a weak moment was one of the other comments he made. And the other one is, I regret Sitting down with the FBI, I wish I never did it. Well, you did it. You ratted. You chased out of the mob. You got stabbed up for it in Long Island. And for the idiots and your little, whether it's you guys writing under fake names, we are inviting whoever's writing these names to our show on a Zoom call and speak your piece. And as far as any of these fanboys that are writing, you're welcome anytime you let us know. You can write into our website. And we'll put you up on the air with us. And you get to answer our questions and you get, get to ask some questions. But when you're sitting in penitentiaries and Gotti and his whole crew are ratting, and I mean his whole crew, we're all ratting. Well, I was sitting in penitentiary. Yeah, they're rats. I owe them nothing. Next question. The one was on Star the Dog and it says, I'm Team Cat. I don't like dogs. I got to find that one again. I thought that was funny <laughs> with Charlie Cifarelli. How can you, what do you mean cat? Come on, come on, team cat. Cats, you got to work too hard for cats love. Dogs just give you anything you want. I'm getting annoyed reading some of these comments. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the problem is you can't get annoyed. You got to laugh at them. You know, most of the people making the comments are fake comments. They're not. Adam Glumack says, Dowd is running your show. He clearly doesn't have the decorum for a format like this. What is the format that I don't have the decorum for? This is what I don't understand. Can someone tell me what the format of a podcast with a killer, a rogue cop, and a suffering podcast guy, and or in Matt's case, a fucking con artist. What's the format? Can someone print it out for me? Who's Matt? Cox. 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 This would happen to be a Matt Cox show. Uh, yeah. I thought you were talking about Mike. That guy, Mike? Mike, that was he yesterday. Something about Yeah, Mike. Mike. Well, M no, Mike, I know. Yeah. You know Mike, Different Mike. Mike, yeah, well, Mike's Mike a killer, Felice. too. Mike, Mike Felice. Mike Felice. Mike Felice is a killer. Feliciano. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, 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 no, he's, he's a killer. He, he technically is a killer. Either yeah, way, he either way, you I mean, have it was a legal you, kill, but yeah. he was a killer. You have, you, have a guy who's, you have a guy who spent almost 13 years in prison, maybe more if you do all the time added up, 18 years in prison. You, you've had your police career that was distinguishable, but you've had some fallings and ups and downs in your life. Multiple suicide attempts, Mu bad relationships. You know, I've had it. And drugs. we've had Mike who's killed people. And we had uh, Matt who's robbed people for their homes. And people want to ask a question. The decorum to run a podcast. Well, I want to tell you why. Because they sit here and they look at our intelligence level. And they're gauging it up here, and then you're coming down oh, here like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I only have uh, 129 college. Well, friends. I'm going to tell you. For uh, we're going to end it. By the way, I'll end it for you. The end of the comments. This is just a short clip for everybody. We want real comments from real people. Put your face up. We're going to choose you. We're going to do live comments for the good comments that are out there. We'll put you up on a Zoom. And we're going to do live feeds with it. And if but you have a bad comment, we want to put you on too. They're, they're, listen, you can if go through real. these names. They're fake names. If they're real. When I you got names like Tony DeSalerno and these names, right. these are all fake names. We know who they are. And they watch every one of our shows. So I want to thank the fake comments for watching our shows. We'll keep it going. And you know, listen, I got to smile at you. I got to take my glasses off and say thank you for helping support me and my show just by keep watching. Hit, just keep hitting the button. Keep hitting the button, the subscribe <laughs> button, you jealous bastards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep hey on, keep me and Mike on. will be in San Diego. Yeah, we'll be in next San Diego. Month, <laughs> if you want to go to our next trip, I think we're going down to Texas in yeah. two months. There you go. So Something while you're cool. home in your basements with Joe Biden, yeah. remember where we're at. There you Thanks go. a lot for the comments. Yeah. <laughs> New York City.